Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Joni Young and I teach weekly art tutorials using acrylics. Today we're working on this pretty winter landscape. I've got a 20 by 24 canvas. I pre-painted it in gray. So I just used this gray right here, a slate gray. If you don't have this one, just mix up a little bit of black and white and until you get the shade of gray that you like. We're gonna be using white and black to start this painting. And I'm just going to create some trees and foliage back here and then come in with our foreground. So we'll just simply start with a large blending brush. This one is a filbert brush and it's a number 50. I'm going to get it a little bit wet first. And I'm just going to take a little bit of titanium white. I'm just going to start right about here, just pulling up and down lightly, not concerned too much about creating perfectly straight lines. Remember it's foliage and trees in the background that tend to be a little bit crooked or slanted. I'm going to take a little bit more water to help loosen up that paint on my brush. And remember, we want the background to be a little bit blurrier and more out of focus than the foreground. Now I'm going to turn my brush sideways like this and start to blend a little bit of these harsher, streakier looking brush strokes. And then back this way, so long, sweeping strokes. And don't worry about down here, we're gonna cover that up. The next brush I'm gonna use is my number two round. I get a lot of water on it and take some black. And I'm going to start coming in with some tree trunks. All different heights and sizes. Another brush that would be great for this is a liner. But with the size of the canvas I'm using, this little round brush works just fine. Give your wrist and your brush a little bit of a shake. So you want to kind of go like this as you're moving the brush. And let's add a few shorter ones here to help create that perspective. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add some foliage on top and I'm going to make it snow or frost covered foliage. So I'm just going to go straight to my white with a number one or a one inch oval mop brush. 
My brush is dry and I'm gonna just tap lightly right into that white. And I'm gonna start right on the top of the canvas. These trees are really big. And don't worry if you guys don't have this brush, you can always use any stippler brush, fan brush, or filbert. It's how you're applying your brush strokes. It's the stipple technique that's gonna give you that foliage look. I just really, really like these oval mop brushes. They create a really nice shape to my trees and branches. And I know we're gonna have our bridge in this area here, so I'm not gonna worry about adding any snow up there. But I'll come up just above here and then just add a little bit sideways like this, scumble in. Pull and slide my brush, kind of just dry brushing here. And then I'm going to add a few little bushes down here as well, or branches, just foliage, whatever. And then with kind of a dryish brush now, I'm gonna scumble over, making some of it a little bit hazy and blurry looking, and just a little bit softer overall. Kind of helps it to look like it's in the distance more. It'll kind of make it look like it's snowing as well, and help to create more of a mood and help to focus our eyes on the beautiful bright red bridge here that's gonna be the focal point and center of interest. It's all about creating that atmosphere and that's just what we're doing right now by softening some of this white and this snow. Okay, we'll come over to this side now and start to add some smaller little bushes some of this may get covered up by the bridge, I don't know yet, but I'm just gonna add some here just in case, because it always looks better when you apply your paint in layers from background to foreground. But at times I do come in later on and decide I wanna have a tree in the background, so you can do it, but this is the best way to approach it. It'll look more realistic and be easier, right? It's a little bit tricky to have to come in later on. So notice how I'm applying the paint. I tap, but then I pick my brush up, take it off, turn. So I'm tapping and turning. And then I'm just going to start to scumble the remainder of this paint out down here. And just like we did on that side, I'm going to scumble around to soften some of this. Now we all know that acrylic paint dries quickly. So you can easily do this right away. And that's what I love so much about acrylics. You either love them or you hate them. I happen to really like that they dry quickly. 
I've always been a, a fast painter and it's just, I just get so excited when I paint. I actually lose track of time and I don't even realize how fast I'm painting until I look back and watch my videos and then I realize, yeah, that does look kind of fast. But my videos, unless I am sharing time lapses, um, and I'll let you guys know if they're time lapses, but my videos, my tutorials are in real time. I've just always been a quick painter. And like I said, it's just, because I have such a passion and I get really excited and I'm in the creative flow of things. Okay, so I'm liking this so far. I think that we can start working um, on adding just a little bit of white highlights and a bit of snow on some of these tree trunks. So I'm gonna switch back over to my little uh, round brush here and without touching too hard, just really, really lightly, I'm just gonna add a little bit. And I like how it's skipping some spots, right? Because that looks more natural. The snow's not perfectly even up and down the tree trunks or branches. It tends to be a little bit patchy. So I'm going to water down my brush a little bit slightly with this white and that'll give me a little bit more ease and uh, flexibility with this paint. Now you may recognize parts of this painting from a tutorial I have from last year. I left the truck out of this one, but I'll leave a link for the video of a bright red truck with the lights on and a Christmas tree in the back coming through um, this covered bridge. So if you guys wanna have a look at that one, look for the link below. But I really liked the image. I like the bright red um, covered bridge. So I wanted to incorporate that and do another take on it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is bring in my shadow area here for my river. And I'm going to do this with a flat brush. This is a number 10, I believe. Anything kind of close to this, a little bit smaller or larger will work just fine too. I'm gonna get my brush wet. I always like to get my brushes wet before, unless I'm using a round mop brush or oval mop brush. Okay, so we know we've got the bridge here and we're gonna have the road coming up here, but down here, we're gonna have some shadows some shadows from maybe the wall or just underneath from the bridge. And then we're gonna have a flowing river. So I'm gonna take quite a bit of black here. I'm gonna pick up some more water because obviously you can see how dry and I'm starting to struggle a little bit. So I've got an, enough water here that it's a little bit drippy and runny. Kind of creating tight figure eights to give it some movement and start getting a feel for that movement and some ripples and some curvy lines. Right away, I'm gonna take some white. <laughs> I'm gonna take those drips and use those. A little bit more black in here. 
and I'm going to go like this and pull and sweep down. And then quickly across, starting to create that sort of icy cold winter look. Okay, I switched over to a number 12 filbert brush. You can use any round or filbert brush that you have, smaller or larger would be just fine. And I'm gonna take some white, just straight white, and I'm gonna create sort of a bank here. So kind of swoops or half circle types of brush strokes here going down towards the water. And then as we get over here, we're gonna make them a little bit bigger because they're closer to us. I'm going to start adding some tighter half circles here. So pushing and almost twisting over. Then I'm going to go right down, pull again. And across. Then I'm going to take my block that's starting to run away on me again. Take a little bit more in there. Just slide my brush and kind of wiggle underneath. It all just depends on how much light or dark you want in your water. Now before I come in with the bridge, I'm going to add another thin coat dry brush scumble um, over the background. I'm going to use a larger brush for this to get this done quicker. So I'm going to go over back over to my number 50 filbert. This is still a little bit wet. It won't work unless it's got just a tiny bit, even though it's mostly a dry brush, you still need a little bit of dampness in there. Otherwise, you're going to end up pushing too hard and struggling. And you won't get that nice, thin, transparent look that you want. Remember, all of this is going to dry a little bit darker. Acrylic does that. I'm gonna take white first for the roof and we're just gonna paint shapes and take our mind off of painting uh, a covered bridge. Let's just simplify it right off the bat, paint a shape. So of course we know at the top, we've got a triangle and it's gonna be pretty wide so like that then we've got the perspective where it's farther away so we're going to make this start to slant down and then up slightly on very slanted angle like this We're 
just gonna color that in or paint it in, color it in. You know what I mean. Okay, just like that, that's easy enough, right? Then we'll have a short line like this. It'll be easier to see if I add a little bit of black. So let me just add a little line here. I'm gonna cut underneath, right underneath that roof line. We're gonna have dark, dark, heavy shadow right here. I'll straighten everything after. Then I'm gonna come right down here with another dark line. And then this time, we're gonna go straight across. If you want to lengthen your bridge, or your covered bridge, definitely easy to do. Let's just add a little bit more length like that. I'm going to add the shadow lines right under here. Now, quick fix. I'm going to take some of that off because I brought it over a little bit too far. Somewhat try to match those up. Okay. There we go. You can pull a few lines in here, even just to get us thinking about those other lines that are going to go across. I'm going to take a little bit more white on the tip of my brush and add another layer of snow. So I'm going to bring this up and we'll have a, a ridge of snow as thick as you want. Am I the only one who uses their fingers a lot to fix things or wipe things off? I'm like one of the messiest painters. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Okay, now I'm going to come across here and add some more white. Bring this down a little bit further because we added that length. There we go. And I'm going to come in and add white inside of here and cut across first and then go down however you want to do it. We just need um, a nice bright white base here for adding our red. Now that being said, I'm not going to make it solid white because I do want to have some variations uh, in tone of red. So I want to have that little bit of gray showing. Okay, and I'm going to color or paint this in. Just going to bring this over a little bit more. A little bit more slanted and come in with my white and 
And then we're going to have some white right in here. You guys know if you've been watching my channel for a while that this is how I like to approach all of my artwork. I like to freehand it and correct as I go along, but there's n absolutely nothing wrong with sketching yours out and doing all the measuring if you want. Measuring and sketching out for me takes the joy of uh, feeling free while I create. That's why I do it the way I do it. Okay, so I'm going to take some black now. And I'm going to bring this up higher, slant, come down here, and then, so you want to line across and then slant and come down. I'm going to cut across here and fill this in black. I'm going to do a line across like that and then fill this in black and I'll show you in just a minute the reason why I'm not painting it solid black. Add a few more shadows here. And underneath here. Okay, so again, I just want to go over my shadows a little bit more here. Get a clear definition of my shadows and my highlights. Now, I'm going to add a little line here and then go on an angle. So you're going to have a rectangle across and then a skinny triangle like this. Now I'm going to fill in this one. I'm going to add some lines for uh, some windows. Make a few of them a little bit thicker. If it feels a bit too, too dramatic, too much of an angle, just simply change it, take some of it off. And I was gonna add a few windows right there, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now I wanna go over with some black Just a little bit here. I'm not going to make it solid because I want variations of sh different shades of shadows, if that makes sense. Okay, and then I'm 
and have a bit of a wall coming down right about here. Just some, some snow. So I'm just tapping a little bit of my white into the black and then I'm going to have to go over some of the foliage we have here. And we'll start adding the snow covered rose here. Letting some of that black gray all those colors work out of my brush so we can just sort of ease into this okay now I'm gonna go in and start to curve sweep and pull so we get some movement in our road and make the snow down here in the foreground show up a little bit more. I'm gonna choose a few areas here on the road to create brighter lines. I'm going to take just a little bit of black here. And go right under that bright white. For a bit more of a shadow.
And I'm gonna take a little scoop of white here, put a bit of white on the tip of my brush, and I'm gonna bring up some snow, this area here. We've got a little wall here. I'm just going to scumble really close at the base of it. I'm going to bring back a little bit more, open this up a little bit more again because I like, I like that river being a little bit wider there. I'm going to take a little bit of white and black. I'm just going to do a thin outline here. With a little bit of white. Cut right into that down the side as well and carefully scumble Add a few shadows. So I'm going to pull on an angle like this. And we've got some shadows maybe from the trees above and around. Same with down here. So I'm just going to slide little lines and take my black clean up that area just down there
take some black and white and make gray again. And then I'm going to add some lines. Make the inside wall here a little bit darker. I'm going to just blend some of this out a little bit. Pull my road up a little bit higher. And I'm going to tap in some more snow here over top of part of that black. It's going to really help to create some more depth. Bring that line up again. I want to add some snow at the base here and then Make it look like it's a little bit kind of stuck at the base and up the side of the wall. I'll add a little bit of black right under here to give this some more depth and make it stand out. Yeah, the first red we're using is crimson red and for brighter highlights we're going to use neon or luminous red. I'm going to start with up here first. So I'm going to use a smaller flat brush for that area. So I'm just going to take my crimson red, go slightly over the black, up these edges a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to take, with a clean brush, my neon red.
and I'm not over mixing. I want to have different shades of red. As this dries, I can add a little bit more. So I'm going to add just a little bit of this crimson red here. Then I'll come in with my neon red. Let that work in to the crimson red. So it'll make a few different shades of red there and then some really bright areas that just pop out over the white underneath. And then we've got a little bit of uh, the gray as well. And the shadows that we added on the side here wall of some of the from some of the trees will dry a little bit darker and show through take my black, crimson red, some lines in the front if you want. Where I've got a little bit of that red going down into my snow. I'm going to put this in the in the front. I'm going to go over my lines here with a little bit of my neon red. You can have a little reflection, a little bit of a reflection in the water too. trees here. So I'm going to be using a filbert brush. I've got a number nine filbert brush here that I'm going to use. And I think I'm going to add some sap green. I don't want a lot of different colors in this painting, but I do want, and I think it's important to add a complementary color to really accent this red even more. So I'm going to take black with some green. I think I'll add maybe a little tree right here. So I'll add a little tree trunk right down off the canvas. And then just start Tapping in for some branches. I'll place this tree right above that little wall. I'm 
And then I think that we could add maybe some garland coming down here. So I'm going to take a little bit more green this time. And just add a little bit. And a little wreath. I think maybe just one more, one more tree here. down in the water. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my green, a little bit of black in there too. Keep it kind of muted. I'm going to add some snow on this tree, or these trees. Just adding white, letting it naturally kind of push and blend in a little bit to that green and black. And I'm going to add a little bit to the wreath here, just little tabs, changing the direction of my brush. We should tie in a little bit of that minty green as well.
Okay, I think it's time to start adding a few lights to our garland here and a little red ribbon. Um, so I'm going to take my neon red and I think I'll add a little dab here. Reload my brush, a dab, a little dot inside, and then just a little wiggle like that for the ribbons. I'm going to take a little bit of white with my little tiny liner brush. This one's a size 10. Or number 10. Just to make these, the little tassels, stand out a little bit more. And then just a little bit of the crimson red. For my lights, I'm going to use my luminous yellow or neon yellow warm. Okay, so I'll take a little bit of white along with that yellow. And I'm going to add little staggered dabs. Clean any green off that I happen to pick up along the way. We want to keep these random kind of staggered looking to make them look more realistic. We could add a few on the trees, or maybe even just this one. Maybe this one's decorated. These ones will make a little bit bigger because it's closer to us. Okay, then very carefully, I'll take just a little bit more and I'll add a little bit of light reflecting on some of the areas here around these lights. So just a little bit of a, a little bit of a glow. And I'm gonna dab that back on there because I just smeared it off accidentally. Acrylic paint is so forgiving. Just using a little round brush now and I'm going to scumble some of this off. Scumble a little bit of that yellowy white color. Just got a tiny bit here in my brush. Just to create a little bit more light that we would see maybe right there. Now I'm just about done. I think I just want to add maybe just a little bit of snow on some parts of this tree.
add another highlight neon red with just a little bit of white in there and a little bit of yellow to balance it out so it doesn't look pink it's more of a coral bright color I'm gonna add a little bit in here carefully go inside Gonna add after adding that crimson red, I'm gonna come underneath, clean this up with some black over top of that red. And go right in here. Very lightly scumble. Some more, a little bit more of those shadows to stand out. A little bit more of my crimson red in here. Just adding crimson red, a layer of it just to soften the harsh black. I want to just wiggle around and slide your brush to create the look of shadows from branches and trees. this painting is all finished hope you guys enjoyed watching and want to paint along thanks everybody i'll see you all soon in another video bye